Good afternoon. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. There we are. Yay, we're back. This has been so much fun. What is on my glasses? Oh, I can't believe that. Maybe it's on my computer screen, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it's on my screen. Okay, hilarious. Welcome. I see Mickey's in the house and Diane saying hi all, hi everyone. If you want to post in there where you're from, I do think it's just so fun to see how far spread around the world we are. I am in Whitecourt, Alberta, Canada, and we have a lot of snow Thankfully, today is not snowing. However, um, it's super windy here today. So the snow is actually melting. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you. That's a cute top. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, definitely one of my faves. I love it. Um, so today I wanted to take on a different topic. I was kind of looking and I've been wanting to do this stamping, but these other things just keep popping to the top of my list. And I love that we kind of just have the flexibility to kind of just go with whatever. So Amy is in Minnesota. Wynell is here from Texas. Libby is in sunny Maine. Sherry is here from Charleston, South Carolina. Diane is in Thorn Bay, Alaska. And Lauren's here from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Danielle is in Germany. Um, oh, I don't know what your name is. Sorry. Um, 75 degrees in Colorado. Deborah's there in Victoria, Texas. Oh my gosh. Diane said last night she had a snowstorm. <laughs> Karen's here from Southern California. Jenny's in Pennsylvania. Diane's in Mississauga, Ontario. Oh my gosh. And Carrie's here from Calgary. Hey, Cal Car Carrie, we're practically neighbors. <laughs> Laura's there from New York. Anne's in New Jersey. Mickey's in Las Vegas. Melody's saying hello from Kentucky. Oh my gosh, guys. Like, that just shows this is global. We are everywhere, but we're able to come and connect with scrapbooking. Oh, Janet's here from Pennsylvania near the Maryland border and Michelle's in Arizona. And <laughs> Jacqueline's here from Lloyd Minister, Saskatchewan. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So thank you for joining me for this live chat. Our goal today is going to be talking about something a little different. Yesterday, if you missed yesterday's chat, it was good. I was like excited at the end. I'm like, gee, that felt really good. I was just um, so happy that um, we were able to have, can you somebody tell me how is the audio today compared to before? How's the audio? We're using a different audio where I'm not on my regular mic for some reason. I usually check that right before. So let me know if the audio is weird and maybe I'll unplug this mic and plug it back in and see if we can't get it to uh, fix up. Uh, Dawn is here from Edmonton. You are really are close to me. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to talk today about incomplete layouts. Huntsville, Alabama. Oh my gosh, that's super close to my in-laws. Actually, they're up here though right now. <laughs> The audio is great. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> good, but it's your first day. Sounds okay. Okay, if it's not broken, I'm not going to try to fix it. Because <laughs> usually I'm using my microphone. It's not using that right now. It's using the computer. Um, some random bloops. So I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I should put that on my list. Is I need to turn off the audio on the comments. The random bloops are you guys. <laughs> and normally we can't hear them because my microphone cancels that kind of stuff out. So if you're hearing random bloops, it's because you're all connecting, which is awesome. Sherry says it's perfect. Sounds fine. Okay, we're moving on. So we're going to talk about incomplete layouts. It's a thing. I don't know. Maybe it's not a thing for you. If you are one of those people that does not have any incomplete layouts, please put your hand up so that we can be like applauding you right now because you deserve a round of applause. Janet says, oh my, slap me sideways. That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> we are on the same wavelength. That's amazing. <laughs> 
Um, the random bloops are terrible. Okay, here, let me plug this in and see if I can convince it to use my other microphone. Sorry, I try to make sure that's always good ahead of time, but today, not so much. It's like Alice did a little fail. Um, here we go. The blue mic. And is it going to work? Input. Let's turn it down. Let's turn it up. Okay. And now I should be able to select it. Okay. There we go. Hopefully that's better. <laughs> and if I can get my screen back. There we go. Thanks for your patience with that. Oh my gosh. Um, Diane said that would be me. No incomplete layouts. No unfinished layout. Lauren doesn't have any incomplete ones. Although I'm seeing a few confessions of people. Um, I only have one or two. I don't have very many. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, yeah, Mickey. She says, sorry, I have misophonia. So the bloops are really difficult. So hopefully this will fix that and make it better. Yeah, it's better. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I didn't, I literally have to figure out how to turn those off. There's got to be a way. I'm sure that that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, Chrissy says, um, no bloops now. And Janet says, you are my hero, Anne. So all of you, seriously, major round of applause. If you don't have incomplete layouts, then you can just look at today and look at this. And I do have a couple of fun tips for you that you'll, you'll love no matter what. Um, but seriously, the, the thing that <laughs> Carrie says too many to count girl, then today is for us. <laughs> and Janice says, I literally have close to a hundred that need journaling. Okay. So this is a common problem for me too, but I do have some suggestions on not only um, how to fix the problem, but how to prevent the problem. So if we know why it's happening, then we can solve this problem, right? So I think that that's where we're going to start. Why do you know why you're not finishing your layouts? Because I think there's a few common issues, but if you know, put that in the comments right now, because that will be a really good way to see if we're on the right track or if there's another problem that we still need to solve. So my thoughts on this is that um, I have a few layouts that I made in a class. Those often don't get stuff put on them. They stay this beautiful, incomplete layout that doesn't have pictures, doesn't have journaling, but I made it as part of a class and it's really pretty and why don't I put stuff on it? It's like this close to done. <laughs> So one of the things I'm trying to do is when I make something in class, get the photos on it right away. <laughs> Janet says, in my defense, filming is the problem. So there you go. You've identified the problem. That's half the battle. So if you have layouts that aren't made in a class, you can go ahead and put your hand up. It's okay. <laughs> um, sometimes you're missing something. So maybe you needed that piece of memorabilia. So the page isn't done. Maybe you needed something from somebody else. So that page isn't done. Maybe you needed, um, you know, some information, some journaling, something that you don't have. Like I literally have pages here where I need to find the journal that I took notes in while we were on holiday. And for some reason, it wasn't with the rest of my stuff. And so I'm going around my house because <laughs> I had a few different places where I've stashed those journals. My night side table had some. My bedroom closet had some. I have some upstairs here in my scrapbook room. I'm like, why do I have this many places for stashing journals? It's because when I go on a trip, I pick up a journal, I start this brand new fresh journal, and I journal on the trip. For the first few days, really good. The last few days, yeah, a little sketchy. But I think that, um, 
you know, just having that journal is a great thing. But when I can't find it, that's a lot less great. So um, one of my things is going to be to gather up my journals. Uh, Janet says, I have a great idea for layouts with no photos. Please, please share. We got to know. <laughs> we got to know. And um, Diane says, yes, that's the third issue. Layout or background is done, but not finished. And Mickey says, I confess, I almost never do layouts for classes at retreats or crops. The only time I actually manage to do it is for online classes. <laughs> yeah, so journals, you know, uh, let's see. Um, Amy says, yeah, I have no pictures printed. And... Libby says, I do classes at retreats, but I never get the photos done. Mickey says, the issue is I go to crops scrapbook often, but I'll not have brought the right alpha with me for a title. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but what else do we have here? Um, incomplete journaling, says Dion, and incomplete embellishing. Um... Jabra says, I bought kits that don't have pictures yet. <laughs> uh, Sherry says, I usually finish the layouts, but I put off the journaling. Yeah. So, Dion, uh, Mickey, no, I got that one. I read that one. Uh, Diane says, these days I only do a project when I have all the ingredients and my layouts planned. That's amazing. <laughs> And Dion says, yes, Janet, please share. <laughs> so Libby says, lots of them need journaling. I can't do that in a group setting. Absolutely. I totally get that. When you are at a crop or somewhere else and you have other people around you, journaling is not good. You guys have seen me. Maybe you have. If not, come and join me for the next one. When we do our scrapbook live once a month, our next one is on the 25th of April and it will be here no, it's on Zoom. You got to come get on my email list. Let me let me show you this email list uh, address. Let's see. Scraphappy.org slash subscribe. Look at that. That's all fancy. I feel all special when I put these things up and I actually remember how it works. <laughs> so uh, Janet says it's so simple. Grab an old album and place those layouts with no photos into the album. When printing photos, have the album nearby and pick a layout at the time. It's easy and you make fast pages. We love that idea. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> when you have those available and you're like, oh, I just printed pictures. I want this page done. Click, write some stuff. Done. I love it. That's awesome. That's a really good idea. Tiffany says, I need to add the date. I have a few of those. <laughs> So yeah, come get on my email list. We're doing Scrapbook Live the 25th of the month. Super fun. We do a live crop. I can bring more people on camera. We can do show and tell. Super fun. Um, the great thing about them is that I make pages. The hardest part afterwards is getting the journaling done because I do not sit in front of people and do the journaling live on camera. Talk about the most boring thing you've ever seen is somebody sitting there thinking as they write their journaling. So I don't do that live. I, I do try to add it afterwards, although once in a while, I'm not so good. Um, Mickey says, I find that kits are hugely helpful to avoid unfinished layouts. Lauren says, I create kits with paper embellishment photos, sometimes even a sketch. Then when I sit down to do the layout, I'm not missing anything I need. And Dion says she likes Janet's idea. Um, hopefully with everything handy, you can find the photos to go with it. So thank you. Thank you, Janet. This is how we learn. This is why I do these things live. I could record stuff and just say, this is what I do. Pretend that I'm perfect. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but, but realistically, um, I struggle with the same things that everybody else is. But we have some good things. So layouts made in classes. Janet just shared a fabulous idea for that. We're missing something else. Maybe we're missing the pictures because they're not printed. Maybe we're missing the journaling because we can't find that journaling book. Um, but something is missing, right? Maybe we don't have the letters because we we're making the page somewhere that we can't do that. Um, the other thing that runs into problems, and I don't know, this is like... Ugh, 
little on the emotional side, but maybe somebody else can relate. Sometimes pages are too important or the pictures are too important or the event was too important. And I'm worried that I'm not going to do it justice and I'm not going to do a good job. I don't know. Can you relate to that? Because, oh my gosh, like that's probably like if I go back to my older pages and I look at the ones that aren't done, it's all the ones that I had the strongest emotions and attachment to. I really wanted to do the job right. I really wanted to do it as good as I could. I wanted it to be the best, right? All of those layouts, those are the ones that didn't actually get done. I might have built the page, but I guarantee I didn't tell that story. And I think that when we can tackle that problem, then that becomes a huge thing. Melody says, yes, I relate to that. I don't journal well. Janet says, for me, journaling is easy, but very personal. So I don't want to share that while I'm filming. And then you do a layout recap, rinse and repeat. And I was just thinking about this today. (laughs) Oh, she says, I have a great idea for that too, Alice. You're going to laugh though. Hit us with it. Hit us with it. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Um, Laura says, when I'm organized, I write the journaling on index cards when I'm sorting the photos. And Tiffany says, most of my pages start with a story. So I do the journaling first. Those get finished. So that goes on to one of my best tips. Honestly, one of the things that made my journaling the best is when I started doing load challenges. That's the layout a day challenge. I didn't invent it. I run it now, but I didn't invent this. My first time I took a load challenge and she said, make a page about this topic. I was like, oh, it allows me to scrapbook like kind of anywhere in my story, anything that I want to do but it allowed me to really start with the idea of the story in mind and then make my page. And oh my goodness, that has changed things for me. And so I really, really love that. Um, So load has been huge. We do have another one coming up in May. So registration will open probably next week-ish. And I'm really excited. It's going to be inspired by the Beatles. But that doesn't mean we scrapbook about the Beatles. We're inspired by stories that help us tell our own stories. So super fun. Um, I'll share more. If you're on that email list that I shared earlier, uh, you'll get the information when it's actually available. And I'll kind of explain more about it there too. Uh, Okay, so... Janet says, okay, go with me. The best time for raw, emotional, and meaningful journaling is best done (laughs) done when it's that time of the month. No joke. (laughs) But that's when all the emotions are bubbling up, right? And you're really thinking about that. So it's like when you're getting that, you kind of already have that little bit of vulnerability. So I get it. I get it. Like, I... (laughs) I get it. Um, And Daniela says, I do a lot of hidden journaling. And Diane says, hidden journaling is good. And uh, Jill says, all my journaling is on the back of my layouts. It's a huge area to write what I want. If anyone wants to know what the story, they have to work for it. I'll do the who, what, where, when on the front. (laughs) And Diane says, remember, it's your story. Yeah, so I think that's a super good way. Um, I do batch work, uh, getting the layouts done. So I think this is Deborah. I do batch work, getting the layouts done mostly. Next week, we'll do a stack, titles, journaling, and then the next week, put it into albums. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine working a system like that. But I think I just love like that playfulness. Sometimes I will make specialty papers and background papers and stuff. (laughs) And I will do that. Janet says, you're already almost crying. You're already crying anyways. Oh my goodness. This is so great. See, you just never know what to expect on a live event. This is awesome. So awesome. Okay. So I have, um, 
yeah, when, when a story is just too important, I think that's when it's even more important to start there and be like, what do I really want this page to convey? And having that story start first really works. So I had an idea. Let's have a look at some stuff. Okay. Um, let's bring this up right here. So this is my travel album. And this is a layout that I made that is actually incomplete. And it is for one of those reasons. I did not get my journaling done, partly because my journaling book is missing and partly because it was just too important. We had such a good time. The trip was so special and I was dying to go to these places. So obviously I have to do the best job in the whole world, right? <laughs> so this is a page that I had created. It looks like it could be done, right? Somebody could look at this and say, oh, that page is done. But <laughs> so it actually has some motion in it, which is why I've pulled it out of the page protector here. So I've got pictures of my kids in front of the uh, Basilica San Marco in Venice. And here, here's my note to myself. It says, find my Venice trip journal to add the details. Story about the pigeons, story about the Basilica and how lovely it is. And I've got this amazing postcard that I bought that folds out that actually gives you a really good look inside the Basilica. So I absolutely loved this. And then I've got extra space inside here. So I've created a little folder and I have more stuff in here. So pictures, postcards, travel tickets and stuff. But where's that journaling? Totally missing totally missing yeah totally interactive page and like you can work for this in my book by pulling it out but lots of times I'll just cut a hole in my page protector and that way you can play with it while it's still inside but this is super fun but without the journaling this just isn't the kind of page that I really really love and so, yeah, and it gives you a chance to really fit more stuff. And you'll notice, like, this was the back of the postcard. It didn't have anything special on it. So I just covered it up and, you know, I put the stuff onto it that I, that I want. So feel free to do that. You're the boss of your own supplies and your own <laughs> stuff. So that was just one page. And it's just a really good example of how I made a really great page but I only did 90% of the work and 90%, that's a pretty good mark, but it's not very good when I look back at this and I want to remember the details from our trip. So it's kind of disappointing. Okay. Now you, I know that you guys liked this interactive stuff, so you're going to get a kick out of this. because so I've got another unfinished page right here beside it. This page here, this is, I obviously did not take this picture myself. This is a postcard that I had on the trip, but the back of the postcard had some stuff on it that was really fun and I wanted the details and I wanted to include that. So going back to my creative memories day where you actually scrapbooked on the front and the back of the same piece of paper, I picked paper for this that was pretty on the front and the back and I actually cut a hole in the paper and I have both the front and the back. And I actually thought it would be fun to write on the postcard. Now, this isn't the postcard that I am most excited to do this for. It was just a picture of the Coliseum. But I mailed myself a postcard from the roof of the Vatican. There was like a little shop and a little mailbox there. So I've mailed myself and I haven't made that page yet because I have to find the postcard in my little stash of supplies. But I really, I want to do the same thing because I want to have the front and the back. Mickey says, I can't believe you have a single travel album. <laughs> well, this is like my catch all travel album actually. <laughs> It kind of has lots of little parts of trips and eventually as I create more pages, they would um, expand into other things. So I'm going to give us 
a quick little peek, you'll see how I've kind of gone through that here. This is my mountain section because it says so here, not that you can tell from the lovely page up front, but I've gone through and I've gathered up pages that, uh, sorry, there's like lots of reflection here. Um, different pages where we've gone to the mountains and kind of put them together. I just felt like it's an area that we go and we have different stories and I thought it would be really fun to see those together. Um, but you'll notice like there's gaps in here and I don't really worry about that. If I was really concerned, I could take some pretty paper. Scrap of paper is really beautiful and I can put that in there and it's not a big deal. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are loving the postcard idea. <laughs> I do have an even better one in here that demonstrates that. So you can see, I do finish pages. Sometimes I even type journaling, not very often. I'm usually too lazy and I just uh, hand write it out. But if I have a lot to say, I will type my journaling. And this is a great example of, I didn't, I made these pages that are super pretty, but I didn't really leave a spot for journaling. So instead I added a little insert here to add some extra journaling. So that was just an extra little tip. <laughs> Sandy said, hi everyone. She's back from a walk. It's hot there today, but it won't be tomorrow. We just showed a super fun little tip for um, using postcards. But here's another page. So this is like an, a good example of things that are missing from pages. Um, I did these ones with uh, pictures that I printed off my color copier because I didn't have the actual size. So this is from a few years ago. I didn't have an awesome photo printer at home. So what I would do is I would print my photos in the sizes that I wanted. I would print them just with a color copier and then I would print those photos from a proper place and put them inside. And now, um, now that I, I have replaced some of the photos, but a lot of them haven't been replaced yet. And you can see that I could use a little more adhesive in there. So it's just good to kind of, as you go through, kind of give your, give your books a little, um, update. But here's the part that I wanted to talk about is as I go through the book, I'm making a list of things that I need. So from our Italy 2009, yes, and that is a fabulous idea, Jill. She said, those blank pages are where um, you can add title pages to your book because that's what she does. And that's exactly what the plan is as this um, develops. But yeah, you can see I need journaling. I need some reprints of some photos because some of them are color copies. Um, but I was, I, I, I did get a lot of this stuff kind of done-ish, right? It's close. There's a lot of stuff, but these color copies are just not great condition. So I would like to put some proper photos on there. And so here was the little postcard page and here's the one where I've cut the hole and then I have inserted the postcard into the center of the hole. And yeah, sometimes you have to cover like a tiny little bit of it, but I think that it really works good. I love the journal insert. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was a fun page using map paper and uh, my friend had kind of drawn where we needed to go, kind of giving us a how to see everything in Rome. <laughs> and I was able to kind of fill these in, but these are, this is another example. These are color copies, really, really bad color copies, um, just with a foot, like with a bad printer. So I need to replace these, these images, but I use like the washi tape to kind of like point to different highlights from our trip. So all of that can be fixed. Separate trip to Italy, only page I think I have done. So <laughs> on my list, second Italy trip, I need more pages. <laughs> uh, Mickey says, I love flipping through scrapbook to find the gaps and the stories that are left to tell. And I think that's a huge thing here is that there are stories that are still untold. Here's a good example of that postcard thing in action again. So this is my Veradero Cuba 
uh, postcard and I had actually sent this to the boys because they did not get to come with us on this trip. So I had sent them a postcard and I just thought it was really cool that I sent that to them. However, um, it took four months for the postcard to arrive. So that kind of became part of the story. So I love that I've got the story about the postcard here. And then I've also got the story about how long it was. And I've been able to make some great fun uh, pages, like a page around that. And had fun with the idea of snail mail as well. <laughs> so yeah, I've gone through and I'm adding different little pieces to help say, hey, I need to tell more about the story and I need to, you know, fill in some more gaps. I love doing photo pa pages when I have lots of photos and I need something that's a little quicker to get more pictures on a page. But yeah, you can see I face some of the same issues over and over. Oh, here's a, oh, this one's mountains, but it's flying. Flying pages are kind of getting their own little section in here. Just wanted to see, did I have something else? Yep, some more pocket stuff. I don't think I had anything else in here that was like a big takeaway. No, but I think that's my takeaway out of this is to do a list so that I can make the pages. I want to be able to look through this album and have like a full story being told, right? I don't want to have this just being like, well, this is that page that I almost done. And this is that other page that I've almost completed. And this is this other page that I've almost completed. So I really liked Janet's idea for um, taking pages where you've got a base of a page, keeping those handy. She puts them into an album so that when she prints her picture, she can flip through and use those base pages. Um, that's a fantastic thing. And how good is that, right? How good will you feel that like you went to this class, you made this base page, and now you can actually get that into your book. That's gonna feel super good. And then um, really think about the things that are holding you back from um, getting things done. So getting those piece, bringing those pieces together. So maybe if you're missing, missing your journaling book, finding it gathering all that memorabilia together in one place so that when you sit down to do the project or sit down to finish the project <laughs> that you have everything that you need. Uh, I love how you combine multi picture page protectors with your full page protectors. Yeah. And I I'll just show you like here. Um, I'm not too worried about, uh, let me go back to one of these. Like, I'm not too worried about what the back looks like. Um, so like this one here, this Disney one, that's not Disney stuff. If I'm really worried about that being in my book, either I can find more pictures and cards to fill in, or I can just fill it in with paper. Like I can cut up a piece of paper, pop it in the pockets in the back and be like, whatever. It's like, it's the back of this. But I love being able to fit more stuff into the books. And I think that pocket pages can be really fun when you make them work for you. So maybe we can have a day about that. Maybe I'll write that on my list is the different tips that I use for pocket pages. Pocket pages, make them work for you. Because I think a lot of people like the idea of pocket pages, but then they get frustrated by some of the things. And I have some fantastic tips for pocket pages. So. We'll get into that maybe uh, this week or something. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, base pages I can't wrap my brain around. <laughs> this is Jill. I'm a theme photo driven scrapbooker. I do see how it's helpful for others. And you know, for some people base pages make all the difference in getting the stuff done. Uh, some people make ba base pages like in a class. Like for me, that's where most of my base pages have come is I go to a class, I learn this really cool thing. I'm really excited about it. But then when I come back, I don't use that base page because I didn't plan my page around that. So I think that that's uh, Janet's 
idea is really good. Sometimes you just need that win to be like, I got this page done. Anybody, uh, if you're going to be doing our load challenge in May, sometimes you need something that's going to be done fast because you're like, ah, it's like, it's an hour before the deadline. I need to get my page done. I really want to finish. I really want to complete the whole month of scrapbooking. And a base page might be the perfect answer for that moment. You'd be like, hey, look at me. I got this done. <laughs> so that could always be a really good thing. Yeah, um, it's one of the best tips. Don't worry about the back. <laughs> and you know, um, I bet I have more pictures that I can just tuck into the back there. I know I have pretty cards that I could tuck into the back there. So as I'm looking at this as a whole album now, that's when I can do those little additions. And just like I added in that extra journaling on those pages, that's a great way to add extra journaling to kind of complete something. When you maybe didn't leave enough room for journaling in the first place, you might be like, uh, you might add it to the back of a page. Super good idea. I also like sticking those little tiny pages in between. I think it's super fun. And so Sandy says May will be here so soon. I know. So fun. Um, and Janice says, I do think some of the issue is that we have so many projects, albums, and some projects take months to complete. It all takes time and energy. And I think for me, I'm starting to realize how looking through an album as I pat my album here beside me, looking through an album has so much value. So right now I chose this album specifically, not just because it had really fun things as well, partly because it had really fun things in it. Um, but I chose the travel album to look at today because I'm not traveling right now. And while I'm missing that. I love the opportunity to go off and travel and I love seeing different parts of the world. For me, looking through these trips really shows me the value that I've taken out of the traveling. Why do I love travel so much? It's from the things that I've learned and the experiences that I've had. So one of the things maybe that you might want to try to see if it can make you a little happier at home might be to look through some photos from one of your trips. Look through some layouts. Look through your album if you've got your albums all put together so that you can actually, you know, enjoy those times and realize the value that you've taken out of doing those adventures. So, um... Jill says, photo first, followed by the theme, and now thanks to Janet, the mood and feel is where my joy comes from creating a page. Yeah, I love it for me. Like my my new um, system since I started doing low challenge for a lot of my pages is starting with that story in mind. Where is this page going? And then from there, it becomes, okay, now that I know the story I want to tell, what photo do I need? Okay, now I've got the photo. Then I take my, like, the all of the pretty papers and all of the things to help me bring that together. And so that's my method. Um, it's not like I do that exclusively. I still sit down and take a picture and be like, cool, I got to scrapbook this picture. It's great. But, you know, my favorite pages tend to be the ones where I start with the story. So what do I need to do more of? Start with the story, right? It's find what works for you, what you like the most. <laughs> so I just saw a thumbs down come in. I'm sorry that you're not loving it. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Sorry for that. But if, um, if you are here and you were enjoying this, I would really appreciate that thumbs up. Maybe they uh, changed their mind. I see that kind of went away. Hit the wrong button. All good. If you are here and you're like on a mobile device or something and you're like, I don't know how to change from the chat back to the chat again, you can um, just hit the little X button. It will take you out to where you can actually give me the little thumbs up, which I love. Thank you so much. Then um, you can actually just over beside 
that button, there's one that says live chat and you'll be able to go back to the chat. So, and if you're catching the replay, we appreciate that too. I love the, I love the love. So thank you for that. <laughs> Janet, Sandy says, we all hear Janet in our heads. I love it. RTS. So that's Janet, by the way, she says load is the best for story pages. And we do focus a lot on story because I find like that's a lot of my base, but it's not exclusively for story. And I definitely moved in that direction because I listen to what other people need. And my way is a good way, but it's not the only way. Um, and other people scrapbook in different ways. And I really wanted to acknowledge that with our challenge. So one of the focuses came in on, um, I tried to incorporate uh, technique days. So we had days that were story days and we had days that were technique days. And I thought, why are we doing this like that? We need to bring both of them together and have both. And somebody's like, Alice, you're going to do like twice as much. I'm like, I don't care. Like it's not, it's not a big deal. I'll add more. And it gives us more flexibility and more inspiration. And gosh, like it adds this whole extra layer that allow us to play. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Michelle says so it was an accident. I'm sorry. I love it. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there we go. Someone's back again. It's all good. I, um, you know, I don't expect everybody to love everything I do. Um, I love the way I do it and I'm happy to share it. And if it's helpful to, full to, to you, then that's awesome. And I'm, that makes me happy because I'm not the be all end all. That's why there are so many different ways. Like if we all liked the same things, that'd be a little boring, I think. Right? Like <laughs> Sandy says, I like the technique additions. Um, yeah. So when we did load, you don't even have to use the prompts. Like some people just use it for the accountability of getting the pages done. And I think that that's super fun. Sharon says, I found the chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, it's about, uh, creating the pages. That is the whole goal of load is a layout a day. We do it for that whole month. And then on top of that, we have the themes and we learn about this topic and, you know, we kind of go deep on that topic and explore it. And then, you know, we use that to inspire some storytelling and we can use it to inspire our techniques. And no matter what you choose to do, I'm like lots of times, like I look at the prompt and I think I'm going in that direction. And it's like, I'm like prompt adjacent again. <laughs> and, um, you know, if I'm making a page, then I'm winning. Like it's all about winning for me. And I want to win by making my pages. That's, that's a huge win for me. <laughs> um, Janet says the load prompts bring forth the story and then I find photos or not to go with it. And I love my pages from load. Jill says, I personally appreciate those who are willing to share. I take it from what I take from it. What works for me. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly the thing. So I, uh, yeah, I, I really love being part of the scrappy community. I think people are so generous with their time, with their ideas, with sharing their stuff. Like we literally have a term in scrapbooking. Like where else do you have a term that talks about stealing somebody's stuff or scrap lifting somebody's ideas? And that's like a cool thing that we actually encourage each other to do, right? Like in art, do they have like a steal my art style? Usually like that's like somebody copied me, right? Like in music, if you take somebody else's song or like an inspiration from a song, like that can be like copyright issues and all the things. And in scrapbooking, we're like, I scrap lifted this layout. And, you know, it's like, hey, use my sample and scrap lift this and create your own, right? Like I love how we have that kind of community happening in scrapbooking. So I appreciate you being part of it. If you want to join me for more fun things, I'll be back tomorrow for our next scrappy chat, our happy at home chat. And if you want to get on my email list, I don't spam because I just don't have time for it and because I hate spam. <laughs> but um, if you want to get on my email list, you'll learn more about the fun things I have going on. 
on the 22nd of this month, I am bringing in an instructor and she is going to take us through the world of stamping, masking, and coloring. So that is going to be super fun. And then uh, on the 25th, we're going to be doing our scrapbook live. So if you want the link for that, you got to subscribe to my email list. Um, and then I like to send out some happy Friday scrappy, oh, why do I call those emails? Oh my gosh, my Friday sunshine emails. And I try to send out like five things that I find inspiring. Sometimes it's other people, sometimes it's things I find online. Sometimes it's reminders to come and join us for the free things that I'm doing. Um, and if you want even more, you're welcome to come and join our Scrap Happy family. We would love to have you. We do lots of fun things within our group, so come and check us out scrap happy that's where we are scraphappy.org actually not com it's like some weird whatever thing on there but scraphappy.org is the place and yeah i love it so very true alice very true <laughs> perfect well thank you so much for joining me for this live chat i have been having the best time hanging out with you i have to say i really love it will there be a good a session on good friday you bet it's going to be a better friday because we're going to be here together <laughs> so yeah i'm not going to take any of the weekdays off um i know it's easter but i'm not traveling and i'm hoping that um we're going to cook a turkey, but I'll do that on a weekend day. So yeah, it's all good. We're going to be together for the holidays if you are so inclined to join me. So thank you. I'll be back tomorrow and I'm not sure exactly one of these days we're going to get to some of the stamping because I'm really excited about it, but I just keep seeing all the other things. Lisa says, thank you for all the great advice to everybody. Yes. Thank you to everyone for participating because you're sharing your tips that makes it better for all of us. So thanks. And great Friday. That's right. It's going to be great Friday. We're going to make it great. <laughs> thanks, Natalie. Okay, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. I hope you'll join me. Bye.